Welcome into the Kansas City Chiefs Report. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. You can follow me on Twitter at HGramNFL. More Chiefs news, updates, training camp nuggets, and a whole lot more over there at HGramNFL. The Chiefs played their preseason opener last night as they beat the 49ers 19-16. And a fun game, a good uh, preseason environment as Kansas City was able to win their preseason opener. So on today's show, we're going to take a look at some winners and losers from the Chiefs opening preseason game. Let's start with the winners here. Byron Pringle, the wide receiver, the young player who has kind of slowly earned a role on this football team over the past couple of years. Thought he looked smooth. Thought he looked solid. Uh, thought he looked like a guy who was ready for a bigger role here in 2021. The stats aren't going to jump off the page for Byron Pringle, but had a touchdown catch, two catches, 10 yards overall. Uh, great route to uh, find the corner of the end zone on a touchdown from Chad Henney. Uh, he looked good. He looked smooth. He slowly improved every single year. Kind of was just a kick return specialist early on in his career, but he has really grinded and become a solid receiver. And I think he's got a real chance to be this team's number three wideout here in 2021. So Byron Pringle, my first winner for the Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers. Bigger role in 2021. Type BR for Byron uh, Pringle. I don't know why I said BR, but we'll just roll with it. Type DR for Demarcus Robinson. Let me know down in the comments. BR for Byron Pringle. DR for Demarcus Robinson. Let me know who you guys think will have the bigger role. Next up is Chris Jones, who we talked about him on our reaction video once the game was over. My goodness. Chris Jones looked like the best player on the field when he was in the game. He was dominant. Chris Jones looked dominant against San Francisco. Had a bull rush, just completely shoved his uh, shoved the 49ers right guard to the ground, sacked Trey Lance. Uh, there's been a lot of hype from, out of Jones uh, during this preseason, and rightfully so. One game in, he looks like uh, the $100 million player that the Chiefs made him just a couple of years ago. Uh, he was fantastic. I can't wait to see how Steve Spagnuolo moves him around this year, playing a defensive tackle, playing defensive end, moving around, find, finding the weak spots on other offensive lines so he can just absolutely go to work. Stone Cold Jones was great. I can't wait to see him more throughout the rest of the Chiefs preseason slate coming up over the next couple of weeks. How many sacks for Chris Jones this year? I'm thinking like 12. I think it's going to be a big year for him. Let me know down in the comments. How many sacks will Chris Jones have in the 2021 season? Hey, we'll cover every single sack he has this year at youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Kansas City Chiefs report. We did a live watch party for the first preseason game. We'll see if we do any more during the preseason. We'll certainly crank out a couple during the regular season. Subscribe. Don't miss any of our videos. We bring you videos almost every single day here on the Chiefs report, including the latest Chiefs news and rumors. One more Chiefs winner against the San Francisco 49ers. That is Shane Bouchelle. And we'll spend some time here on the rookie UDFA quarterback out of SMU. I thought he was composed. Now, listen, he didn't get into the game until the fourth quarter. He was actually the fourth quarterback that played after Patrick Mahomes played a series, Chad Henney for a little bit, and then Anthony Gordon, the other uh, quarterback competing for QB3. But Shane Bouchelle, the numbers are solid. He looked composed, 8 for 11, 76 yards. Had a rushing TD, the game-winning touchdown. His QB rating was 91.5, so above average on that front. Uh, I thought Anthony Gordon played fairly well, but I actually thought Bouchelle outplayed him overall, even though he was sacked three times. The battle between these two is very interesting because Gordon is more mobile. He's more creative. He can do some things with his legs and throw on the run. Bouchelle, more of a pocket guy, but he can throw the ball downfield a little bit more. So I'm fascinated to see... Uh, how these two continue to duke it out during Chiefs training camp and on throughout the rest of the preseason. So who do you guys think will be QB3, whether that's uh, the practice squad quarterback or a quarterback making the 53-man roster? Type AG for Anthony Gordon. Type SB for Shane Bouchel. I thought both were solid, but I actually like what I saw from Bouchel just a little bit more overall. He was composed, especially on that two-minute drill, uh, to win the game late in this one. Today's show is sponsored by BetUS, our sports betting partner for the 2021 NFL season. And you can make some money all season long at chatsports.com slash chiefsbet. 
Go to that link, plug in our promo code CHIEFS125. That'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. Put that 100 bucks at sign up. You'll get 125 for free. And, hey, you can already bet on week one of the regular season. The betting odds are out. The Chiefs are six-point favorites. Uh, the total over-under against the Browns is 52.5 points. Take advantage. I like the Chiefs in this one. Money life, but you can money line the Chiefs all season long at chatsports.com slash Chiefs bet. Use that promo code Chiefs125. That's going to get you 125% deposit bonus. All right, let's take a look at some losers against the 49ers. I don't want to say the rookies were bad, but I got to mention the Chiefs rookies here because where were they? It was kind of absent. Now, obviously, like there's no stats for a guy like Creed Humphrey who started at center, and by all accounts, he was fine. I'm not going to count Lucas Niang as a rookie, even though this is his first year playing. He also started at right tackle. No concerns there uh, from what I saw, and I assume Creed Humphrey played fine in his first start at center, but didn't see a lot of flash from Nick Bolton. Not a lot to report there. Um, Noah Gray, two targets, no catches. Cornell Powell had a couple of catches in, you know, uh, I don't want to call it crunch time, but I guess crunch time late in the game. So that was fine. But overall, the Chiefs rookies were just kind of absent, which isn't a big deal. It's the first preseason game, but I would have liked to see some of these guys get more reps, get more opportunities. Uh, maybe a lot of it just didn't show up uh, during the live uh, game as much as uh, I would have liked. Uh, maybe we'll watch the film and see if I see more, but uh, just kind of quiet. And uh, for the preseason, you want to see the rookies uh, uh, play and do some cool stuff, uh, which we didn't really get in the Chiefs preseason opener. Which rookie are you most excited about, though? I still like this draft class. It's not like after one preseason game I'm just punting on the rookies. Let me know which one are you most excited about. I'd probably go with Nick Bolton, but maybe it's someone else. Get your votes in. How about Harrison Butker? And, hey, he banged in a 53-yarder. Uh, two for three from field goals. His only miss was from 62 as Andy Reid let him try a super long one late in the first half. But, God, I mean, he missed another damn extra point. Like, this was a problem last year, and he doinked another one tonight. Stop missing extra points, Harrison Butker. You're putting my name to, to bad usage here. Let's go. Two for three on the night, one for two on extra points. I, I It's weird. I've gotten to the point I'm more confident from Butker from 50 yards out than on his 33-yard extra point attempts. I don't know if it's mental. I don't know if it's just one of these things. I don't know if it's just, oh, he missed one in the preseason. Who cares? But after what we saw last year, you've got to at least be somewhat annoyed, if anything, if not concerned. I wouldn't say I'm concerned. I wouldn't say I'm worried. We'll let you guys weigh in here. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Are you worried about Harrison Butker? I'm going to type my N for no, but, like, I am annoyed. Don't miss extra points. Like, you need every – every point counts. In a regular season game, him missing that late extra point gives the 49ers a chance to go tie it and force overtime, whereas if he makes it, go up 20 to 16, you force them to beat you with the touchdown. That's, that, that's pretty frustrating. So get your votes in. Let me know if you are worried. Last one here, Darwin Thompson. In terms of his play, it was fine. But once again, he just does something stupid every time he, he, he plays. Like, this is why – He's been inactive quite a bit. This is why he's on the roster bubble, and I think in danger of not making this team. Guess what? He had a stupid personal foul penalty getting in some dude's face after a play. It's just stupid with him. Like, he, you just can't trust the guy. He's talented. He's capable. But the guy makes too many boneheaded mistakes. So Darwin Thompson, uh, my final Chiefs loser against the 49ers. So before we sign off, drop a name on each side of the spectrum. Chiefs biggest winner, Chiefs biggest loser against the 49ers. Let me know down in the comments section who the biggest winner and loser was. And we will see you next time here on the Chiefs Report.